Mag. Um, is your what is your full name? Uh, Maggie. Maggie. Okay, so Mag, um, and she's a friend of a friend, um, my best friend actually, Sam. And Sam stayed with you in France, correct? Yeah, uh, exactly. You seem to. I see your lovely backyard. Is that a chicken coop? Oh, sorry. Is it a chicken coop behind you? A chicken. Chicken coop? coop, or what is the cage behind you? <laughs> Oh, no, it's not the chicken. No, it's my husband who did, uh, I show you, I'll try to show you. He did, uh, uh, he planted some tomatoes. Oh. But uh, I don't know if you see him, but we have a very nice wolf dog. Seriously. And he likes to go uh, peeing on the tomatoes. <laughs> so my husband put some cage <laughs> to protect. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. That makes sense. Gotcha. No chicken. No chickens. no chickens. Okay. But you look like you've got a pretty good setup for the for the pandemic. How's it been over there so far? Uh, for real, it was kind of uh, cool uh, to live because I have a backyard and I have a cool house and we can spend uh, a lot of hours with my kid and my husband. It was cool, but uh, the only problem was the no working at all. So no money at all. Right. So that was quite hard just for this point. But otherwise, it was cool being home. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, doing nothing. So quite totally. cool. What's, uh, what do you do for work in Bordeaux? I'm a hairstylist. Oh, a hairstylist. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because Sam's also a hairstylist. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. So are you back? Are you guys back to work now? Yes, we are back to work since uh, 11th of May. Okay. Uh, but uh, since it's summer here and there is a lot of people going in to the beach and visiting a lot of tourists, so there is there will be another a second uh round of uh of uh, uh covid uh attacked <laughs> i don't know how to say it in english sorry yeah and no. uh they are preparing us to maybe close again some stores and so we don't know if in maybe get all the, a few weeks or maybe a month maybe we we will be quarantined again just by neighborhood or by cities or just all the stores we don't know right yeah i have people working upstairs in my apartment so if you hear banging i'm gonna go on and okay off. no i don't hear anything except okay. you <laughs> that's what happens when you're working from home <laughs> yeah people are working upstairs um, <laughs> and live in an apartment um i guess oh. what's uh what's the one thing that you miss the most about pre-coronavirus time? Uh, I would say traveling yeah. first and going to concert. Oh yeah. Like live shows are always very important in life for us. And it's crazy that we went to zero concerts since like five months. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> but it's not a big deal. But traveling is really hard for me. Yeah, totally. Me as well. I'm getting a little stir crazy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm hoping that this show helps a little bit to just be able to talk to people in other countries, but I'm getting <laughs> a little bit antsy. Um, oh, yeah. When I guess concerts are an interesting one, I didn't realize how much I would miss that because I don't tend to seek out concerts and shows all that much here in New York but you know as I go to bars there's like live music and so I actually do quite miss it but when is I feel like when is that ever going to come back or until we have the a vaccine or something yes yeah I, um, I agree or like I've you, seen you, some you. like parking lot concerts where you have to like social distance and you're pretty far away uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really see the, the the point of this kind of party. I don't like party like this. So, I like you know, do, going to a little punk concert and like very crowded, a lot of beer, a lot of people. So I don't go to concert to see people playing in my car. No, I no. I will not uh, try this. <laughs> 
what kind of music do you typically go to? What kind of shows? Mm, a lot of different things, but usually mostly punk music, garage. Um, I don't know, 60s music, you know, kind of, um, uh, I don't know if it's okay in English. Uh, no, Ye Ye is not existing in English. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah, sixties music or uh, retro group, you know, surf music, this kind of things. You know, I was supposed to go this summer to a festival uh, in England called the Rebellion Festival, and okay. there is a lot of punk, uh, old punk bands like uh, I don't know, a GBH. Uh, Kind of them. And no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we're gonna actually that could maybe segue pretty nicely into um one question I wanted to ask everybody who I get on the phone with is just like, what is one stereotype that either follows you around or like the country that you come from um, around that you sort of want to combat or that you think is like maybe silly and like, you know, not correct? <laughs> it was the question I had the most, I have the most, uh, it, it's complicated because uh, I know French people, uh, there is a lot of stereotype on French people, but I think they're all true. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard for me to be objective because I, I usually don't like really French people. So, um, but not all the French people are rude. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> Some people are nice. <laughs> um, and just personally, I think, uh, a lot of people think that I'm very uh, uh, hard to talk with because I'm I'm big. I have a lot of tattoos, and I can be quite um, scary for some people. But no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. No, that's a that's a good point because uh, having traveled with Sam quite a bit. I also know this because she has tattoos all over as well. And there are there are countries that it doesn't matter so much, but then there were other countries we went to that people would, I mean, somebody, I think it was in South Africa, even was like, I don't really like your tattoos. And yeah. she was just like, well, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. That's the point. <laughs> right. Who cares? But also- but I've, been in, I've been in South Korea uh, last October. And I know uh, a lot of uh, the the majority of uh, the the population is not very is not um, uh, used used to see a lot of tattoos, uh, even if uh, the new generation is getting tattoos like a lot. But I saw the the even if it was really. Uh, uh, really hidden that I saw people looking at me always like I don't care because I'm used to but sometimes it's like <laughs> yeah you know? yeah it gets Get over it. <laughs> a little exhausting sometimes yeah <laughs> yeah fair and I think well you tell me like there's a difference maybe in your mind between people who are like looking because they think it's beautiful or unique in certain ways and then there's you know the other side that does think maybe you're like intimidating to come up to or uh harsh mm -mm. or something like that mm -mm -mm. But, yeah but I think when people are looking at you uh with a kind of fascination you can see in their eyes that it's a, a nice look. It's not the same look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. You can definitely tell. Um, yeah. I, I know those looks also well, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. Um, and then, well, so I wanted to ask you also about 
Um, so sort of what has, what has been happening in the U.S. right now with the Black Lives Matters movement, I know that that has spread out to other countries um, and also France. So I was just like looking at this article a couple of days ago about French protesters commemorati commemorating the death of this black man there. Um, I, I guess it would be interesting to hear how you guys feel about that, if there has been protests in Bordeaux and like sort of what um has that happened before and and it does this feel like a different a different thing now does that make sense um uh, yeah uh so it it wasn't the the, the first um the first time we had um protests like this because you know french are a big protester i don't know if you if you follow a bit the history of france but we are known to be always on the streets <laughs> That's actually and, um, really rad, by the way. Sorry? <laughs> That's actually really rad, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But sometimes you have to just... Uh, it's, uh, it's, what is rad is that we, we have this uh, strong history with protesting, but sometimes it goes a bit too far, I think. But it's okay. And um, the movement of the Black Lives Matter... Uh, was um, maybe not as much followed uh, in France as uh, in USA, but we had a lot of um, of um, protesting uh, in Bordeaux. It was not that big, but it was still there. Um, I don't know if it will change something, honestly, uh, because um, since two or three years ago, uh, now, we have uh, a big movement in France, nothing related with um, Black Lives Matter, but uh, for um, people are protesting to get some rights uh, for, uh, for working. And um, there, is, there is a lot of uh, police, um, uh, not attack, but you know, uh, police, I don't know how to say in English, it's very hard for me, <laughs> this subject. <laughs> These are like um, subjects too, but like police brutality. Yeah, police brutality. It, there is a lot. Uh, it's it gets more and more and more and more brutal on the protesting now in France. Like like in USA, not the same uh, uh, level as USA, but we have a lot of people uh, that have been uh, seriously injured by policemen, even if they were not protesting. So we had a lot of um, uh, protesting about that and the brutality is getting more and more uh, higher. So I'm not sure the protesting about Black Lives Matter in France will change anything, really. <laughs> but it was cool to see all the people going to the, down the street as well. Totally, right. Um... Yeah, that's fair. That maybe I I do think that protesting is good, right? But does it is it changing something? I'm not sure. I do think we should not continue sure. to to protest and be out on the streets, but it's yeah, like we, we have, should do that, but we have a system now that's maybe doesn't even care. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's sometimes sad to see some people getting hurt and you know deep inside you know there is no, that's not going to change anything. But it's cool that people continue to go out and to fight. And it's, it's beautiful to see. Yeah, but. totally. Super inspiring. Um, mm -hmm. I've been out at a couple protests myself and it's like gives me a jolt of energy um, to see people sort of coming together um, from all sides and from all places to, to fight mm -hmm. for, you know, solidarity among everyone. Really. Yeah. Um, mm -mm. So that's cool. I wanted to ask, um, I actually, I don't, I'm not sure that I was really aware that like the French have a history of being big protesters. Where did that come from? Do you know? I don't know. I don't want to say uh, bullshit, so I may <laughs> not, <laughs> I may not say anything, but uh, to me, uh, the fact uh, that uh, the French Revolution 
uh, had a big impact on the people. Uh, I think we got that on our memories. And um, I don't know if you remember uh, 1968, uh, 1968 uh, in May, there, will, there, there was a big, big, big protesting in Paris in France and in, everywhere in France. We call this Miss 68. Uh, it began with the student and it took all the country, the, all the, the worker, uh, the um, working class uh, get on the streets and fight for the right. And I know it's been a, like a big wave uh, in all the world. Uh, there were there were protesting everywhere in the world. Maybe not for the same reason, but I remember um, seeing articles like uh, about everybody protesting in this period, and maybe French people uh, took took this uh, this moments of history for a uh, um, um, uh, uh for their their proud um, they are proud of this um, this thing they accomplish, and uh, I don't know if it's okay what I'm saying. But <laughs> yeah, no, no. I know I make a lot of a lot of mistake when I'm speaking, but <laughs> totally fine, totally it's really fine. Really hard to explain French, something very same. very specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. If I was speaking French, it would be exactly the same. So absolutely no worries, <laughs> um, and I would not be able to hold this conversation. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that that does it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'll have to look up some some of that because I guess that that's not that's not a stereotype of the French that I had in my mind. Okay, um, coming from the U.S. So yeah, it it's kind of interesting. Okay, these things. Yeah, hmm. oh, um, I'm curious about the French stereotype other, <laughs> in other countries. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, um, hmm, what is the French the French stereotype like wine drinkers, right? Yeah, um, we are wine drinkers. Yeah, right. But like, also sort of like every, lots of people like wine, you know? Um, so yeah, wine drinkers, what, baguettes, coffee? Baguette, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but like, it's true, it's true. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Well, and those kind of stereotypes don't seem to really, um, you know, they don't seem to hurt the French, right? It's not like a French person is like, oh yes, I love wine, and you know, yeah. they're like, oh, gross. Because it's not really, it's not really uh, bad right. as a stereotype. I think there, there could be worse. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally <laughs> agree. <laughs> um, cool. Well, yeah. So tell me a little bit about what we would do if I was there. Uh, and you so graciously took me into your home. That would be amazing. Uh, and coronavirus wasn't screwing everything up. Okay, so I don't know if Sam told you what we did when she was there. Um, but, uh, you know, Bordeaux is like the city of wine, of red wine. And uh, so in the countryside, there is a lot of uh, chateau. Uh, you can visit all the wine chateau. Okay. So you can go in the countryside and visit uh, and have a try, try the wine. But there is this typical medieval um, village, uh, just uh, 30 minutes driving from Bordeaux, and it's called saint Emilion, and it's really beautiful. It's uh, up in, in a little, little hill, hill, and um, it's really beautiful, typical uh, old monument, cathedrals, and you can just walk down the city, and try good wine in the very ancient places. It's really beautiful. I, I, I brought some over there and uh, we have really a good time. So we could go there. <laughs> and um, we are uh, maximum, I said maximum one hour, one hour, 40 minute, one hour driving from the beach too. We are very near the ocean. So I'm used to go very, very often to the ocean. And there is a big, sa a big dune of sand called La Dune du Pilar. Uh, and it's really beautiful. It's quite hard to climb, <laughs> but when you're on the top, 
it's really, really, really amazing. The view is amazing, but there is a lot of tourists always, but it's really, really beautiful. So I think you should try this too. Okay. Um, enjoying oysters, if you like oysters. Yeah. Um, if you're not vegan, you can come to, to Bordeaux because <laughs> there is a lot of amazing food. <laughs> but I know a lot of people are... Uh, uh, not uh, happy with that because we eat a lot of ducks and uh, not uh, do uh, we didn't do the very nice way to prepare the duck so I know a lot of Americans are like oh, no not foie gras <laughs> oh yeah the foie gras right 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you yeah. see <laughs> but it's very beautiful it's very good if you want to try it once in your that in your life yeah you, you I, have to, to come here i i'm sure it's way better the foie gras you have over there is probably way better than what i have had um but yeah. i have in fact had it yeah. um not vegan but yeah it's uh when you read about the process it's like yeah it's kind of yeah like it's process. awful it's yeah. awful yeah, yeah really I, I agree i agree yeah <laughs> um but yeah those places i'm definitely going to check them out on google street view which is not the same want to just make that no. very clear definitely not the same but i have been finding some like beautiful pictures on google street view so as soon, okay. as soon as all this lifts then france is on my list and so i will make sure to come to Britain. oh you yeah. should come to see me <laughs> yeah. i'll try to bring sam along too <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah 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 all right. Um, well, I think that's it. Thank you so much for being on the show Thank and helping me you. out, here, especially <laughs> pretty late notice. So, um, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you, Bailey.